Um, all right. Um, so this is kind of last minute. I've been uh, wanting to bring this up to everybody's attention for um, a while since we've been looking at this for a while. Um, but it just never kind of got to a point where it was uh, a, a good milestone. Um, but yesterday, nobody had uh, signed up for today's slide. <laughs> That's going to be the day. So um, the slides are at the link below. If you want to follow along, there's a couple of links in there that uh, may save you from typing. Um, but again, this is uh, work that's been going on for a while uh, with the group of people on the on the slide. Um, and so we kind of started on this um, well, well on the last item on this list, which was getting a better understanding of cloud costs uh, specifically for the Anvil project. But then as the project developed, um, we realized there are some additional benefits um, that, um, that we could, it can be that can make use of this work. So if you're not familiar with uh, PPV, it's a uh, basically a meta scheduler for Galaxy as a plugin module that's been developed uh, mostly by the one in the Australian team. And there's this notion of a shared database uh, within TPV. Uh, if you've ever set up your own Galaxy instance, especially a production one, um, one of the early on steps after the processes are running is to decide how many resources to assign to each tool. Um, and it's tedious, especially um, you know, if you got a lot of tools, but also it's very um, sort of uh, open-ended, right? As a, as a system administrator and even as a, the main scientist, you may not know what a good value is for how much memory or how many CPUs ought to a tool be um, assigned before uh, to the scheduler. And so TPV is uh, looking to develop this notion of a shared database that any Galaxy using TPV can simply point to and make use of, um, and of course, override with local settings if uh, they choose to do so. So um, the goal here was then to, you know, seed the values with uh, some data-driven uh, decisions. Then, uh, well, kind of an extension of that is that, you know, this is still a static list. So for example, you know, one of the popular tools like Bowtie 2, we can always assign it, I don't know, 16 CPUs and 64 gigs of memory, right? But if you submit a tiny job versus a large job, those may not be super familiar, I mean, super appropriate. Um, and so, Ultimately, the goal would be to allow um, Galaxy to set these resource, resource requirements on a per job basis, given the inputs. So Kaivan has been working on the service called Ask Galaxy um, that uses some machine learning models um, and historic usage uh, uh, data to guess or to uh, uh, estimate how much memory and how many CPUs a given job ought to uh, be assigned given its uh, inputs. And then uh, back to sort of the original aim of, of all this work was uh, the Anvil project, you know, is um, looking to grow adoption over the next few years. But one of the biggest concerns people have about it is how much is this analysis going to cost? Um, and this can be, you know, from the exploratory stage of where I'm just running a few jobs and, you know, I don't know whether a job's going to cost a dollar or, you know, a hundred dollars. Um, and then all the way to running tens of thousands of samples or thousands of samples uh, and, and costing you know tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars. Again, it'd be nice to be able to put some of those uh, estimates in, in the proposals when people write, uh, write those. Um, and of course, when, when they have the budget. So anyway, those are the sort of high level goals um, that uh, we undertook for, for this project. And then um, the other thing that sort of surfaced as, uh, as we're looking at some of the plots that we're gonna look at together is that uh, you know, all this data is, is kind of being uh, available now uh, and it helps in this data-driven decision. So we, to date, only used Galaxy uh, main for collecting the historic usage data. And so it gives you some insights into the server usage, right? We've oftentimes reported we have, I don't know, 250,000 users or we run 500,000 jobs uh, per month. But uh, this gives you a little more insight into sort of uh, annual uh, variability uh, and, and how are those 500,000 jobs uh, divided across tools. So we can look at tool popularity and we can look at analysis patterns, right? Uh, our, you know, is RNA-seq um, being phased out in favor of single cell tools, right? So um, 
um, again, things that, that kind of hopefully uh, we can make use of, especially when the time comes to do some reporting for grants. Secondly, uh, we can, you know, anybody can get access to this dashboard that I'm, I'm going to show you all. Uh, so researchers can then um, poke through it too and, and see what other tools are pe people using and what's popular. Um, and then uh, if we see a new tool coming up, uh, maybe the, uh, the GOAT community or the group team um, can look at, oh, hey, this is emerging. Uh, maybe we need a training in this department or something. Uh, and there's of course a lot of more a lot more options that can be you know, pulled out of the data. You know, how many data jobs are failing and things to kind of further uh, help with this, but you know, it's uh, a first step in that direction. And so uh, the project's been going on for a number of months. Um, and so to date, we've um, uh, we this is how far we got. So we queried and filtered usage data from usegalaxy.org as our primary uh, you know data server. Um, we visualize much of this data in this interactive dashboard um, and I call it, I kind of quoted the dashboard thinking that um, while it is a dashboard, it's, it's also like a platform for continuing to develop this, um, these visualizations. And so it, it leaves opportunities to, to do that for those interested, but it's also kind of on the sidelines of galaxyproject.org's uh, site. So at some point we may have like a more integrated dashboard, but for the time being, um, it's, uh, it's a Kind of a powerful and, and um, not yet super integrated um, website. And then uh, Kaiban has used some of the data that we're going to look at uh, behind this as, uh, developing the Ask Galaxy API and training the models. As get a number of um, people have been working on this. Um, and so we do meet um, every Thursday, every other Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern. If anybody else is interested, um, the next scheduled call is for next Thursday, so a week from now today. Um, again, anybody's welcome to uh, to join. And so, examples of what um, kind of some of the dash insights that uh, we can get from this dashboard. Um, so, like I said, we can look at what are popular tools, right? Uh, you know, in my mind, at least, popular was a function of how many users are using it and how many tools. Oh, sorry, how many jobs are being submitted? Uh, so, a combination of of those two uh, is sort of the simplest way I define a popular tool. Um, and so again, that, that's one of the sort of plots um, that's available. And then you could look at, in this case, uh, sort of the number of users that have run a, a given tool. Um, sorry. Um, the other thing is uh, we can look at sort of usage anomalies. Um, late last year, um, there was this uh, massive spike in the feature counts tool for a month. Um, could have been one of the COVID analyses that was submitted, could have been a training. Um, I actually um, don't know, we didn't dig into it, but um, it is something that raised some flags and people can um, you know, take the, the next step and dive deeper. And then um, uh, another thing is, again, usegalaxy.org specifically is a public resource uh, that is shared. And so we can look at what, what tools are using the bulk of resources to balance um, the usage of the server, maybe uh, in, in adjust the server usage, right? So I, I didn't put any, or there are no tags on these tools, but you, know, you can tell that sort of the bottom three tools um, are, are consuming as much as, you know, the top probably, you know, 100 or 500. Uh, I don't know the count on these, uh, on these lines. So you know, looking at those specific tools, making sure we've optimized those uh, is maybe worthwhile some effort. And so um, I wanted to, you know, kind of go through uh, the plots that are here and sort of open it for discussion. If people have questions and are interested in looking at what's, uh, uh, asking some questions, we can, you know, do that. So um, the dashboard is at this URL observable, um, at cloud cost, use Galaxy um, usage. Um, and Michelle has been the star of this dashboard to date. She's developed um, most of the plots. Um, and so um, this is this is the dashboard. Um, and you know the data that we've that's visualized down here is uh, from August 2021 through August 2022. Uh, and um, and we've filtered out a couple of tools because they were dominating 
on most of the data. So the data fetch and the upload, upload quit sort of being used um, late last year, I believe, or early this year, I forget now. And, and anyway, it, it just dominated. Uh, and so we got basically two classes of two, two classes of bots on here. This is uh, the one that presumably took the most time to uh, to develop, and it's this um, trying to combine uh, multiple um, axes or multiple questions into one to kind of give you more of an answer um, rather than a look at the data. Uh, and it we're using consumed memory as a proxy for um, resource utilization. Um, because the CPU one didn't really uh, give us much diversity in, in this plot. And then uh, the number of jobs. So uh, presumably the tools that are in the sort of further to the top right uh, are both popular uh, and resource intensive. Uh, the ones in the kind of on the left hand side, they're resource intensive, but not necessarily popular. And then you know, tools on the bottom right are tools that are um, uh, popular, but maybe not resource intensive. And then these two red lines indicate averages uh, across all the tools um, that have been run. So um, we, we have a number of these um, kind of, um, I guess, the resource intensive popular tools. Um, and, and then a vast majority, I guess, in the uh, uh, in the low resource usage. So um, there's a you know, we can zoom in through this for a number of tools, I mean, for a, a number of clicks. Um, it's not infinite, uh, just due to some restrictions on, on how observable um, exposes this data. And there's some uh, technical um, limitations of the plot library. But, uh, you know, if we disregard that, it's, it's a, I think, a really cool visualization. Uh, and so you can hover over any um, any ball in the in this plot, and it gives you the stats on um, the details, I guess, of uh, the number of jobs. So um, again, you know, what we take out of this data, like the previous slide kind of showed some examples, but you know, if anybody's got, uh, you know, got some ideas or questions, um, you know, we can talk about it now. We, you can look at it after the call and um, run with it. Um, the other type of plots are these um, uh, staggered line plot or um, stack plots um, that sort of show two variables um, plotted. So this one is the number of jobs per month uh, grouped by a tool. Uh, so again, uh, they're nicely uh, uh, labeled with tooltips uh, that contain details of the particular job for a given month. Um, and so we can see in this case, um, sort of the, again, not really surprisingly, um, the largest number of tools are, is the import. Again, we filtered out the data uh, fetch uh, tool just because, again, it was dominating by like an order of magnitude. And then we get some fastq uh, or QC tools. Um, I'm personally not familiar with Abricate. Um, this was the first time I came on my radar. I didn't realize I'm kidding. You better rest. Is there a question? Um, anyway, so uh, you know that's one uh, one way. And then you can, you know, the cool thing again is uh, you can filter some of the sort of the the, the dates and uh, filter by the tool popularity. So if we visualize everything, um, um, that's what what it looks like. Uh, and so this, by the way, this combines, so there's some data massaging that took place here uh, that combines all the tool versions because um, otherwise there was a lot of broken up lines that didn't make a lot of sense. So we bundle all the versions into one, um, one tool. Um, and then we can, again, this was not really discernible. Um, Michelle added this slider that allows you to sort of filter the 20, uh, tools that have the most jobs and sort of, and then on the kind of, well, this isn't, this is, so we, we limited it to uh, 100 at the moment. So it's from like the 80 to 100 most popular tools. This is that range of 20. So you can dig in a little bit um, and, and get some details. And then if you're interested in you know, how did a specific tool behave over that year, uh, for example, in bow tie, you can click it and it just does this nice, um, um, filtering, I guess, or dimming of the rest of them to see whether it's standard or whether it's continuous in, in its usage or whether it's uh, fluctuating from month to month. Um, and then uh, the other thing is users per month. Uh, so how many users have used a given tool in a given month? 
um, kind of contributing to that notion of tools uh, popularity. Um, and it's, in my opinion, really surprisingly consistent uh, for a given tool um, in a given, um, you know, across the year even. So we have some dips um, it's following the holiday season, people are uh, ramping things up. And then over the summer, um, general usage kind of drops. Um, and it's mostly seemingly, you know, it's small, small components of each tool, but uh, it seems the uh, QC is dominating. This is a, uh, again, the same principles apply um, for the plot. So you can um, um, scale, I mean, filter the most popular, least popular, a little less popular tools and um, get that. And then uh, now we get into some resource usage. Uh, so this is the total CPU time um, for a given tool per month. Um, uh, the average CPU time, this one is uh, a lot less static, or consistent. Um, and then uh, we go to memory. So we did users memory and, and CPUs as uh, the three levels of, uh, of ingestion. So anyway, that's... Uh, that's what's here for now. There's a couple of experimental plots down below that aren't um, front time ready yet. But um, if there's any questions or um, comments about this, I'll go back to the presentation. I've got a couple more slides. Um, I have a quick question. Um, does this update or how is this updated over time? So we'll, we yeah, have I'll talk scripts? About that. Uh, it's not updated automatically over time. So that's the remaining slides. Okay. Um, and to what extent can this be transformed to use with Grafana and Telegraph, which would be live? What was the second one? Grafana. Telegraph. Oh, um, I don't know. Um, it, um, you know, there is a, I guess, the question of where does it integrate with some of the, uh, yeah, either existing tools or you know, the one topic is that uh, galactic radio telescope that um, collects some of this data or it used to. I'm not sure what the status of it is. Um, but uh, so, I mean, I guess maybe I'll talk about, I mean, it's just a, a couple of queries um, that feed this data and, and we can talk how it might be fed into Grafana or something like that. Um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, so this is what, uh, what's happening behind or what's happened um, behind. We. Uh, you know, looking at all the data at usegalaxy.org was painfully slow and, um, and it was running it on Galaxy Main's database. So it wasn't um, for the faint of heart, I guess. So we wanted to minimize that. And so we basically took the data from usegalaxy.org, extracted, filtered only some tool and job info and created a few local tables um, that then developed some of these queries. Um, and then um, we extracted these metrics, uh, such as what I mentioned, the users and jobs and, and CPU time, and then uh, created files that feed this dash. Um, observable was chosen because it was uh, like a lot of the uh, COVID work um, was really kind of cool in, in how it was uh, visualized on there. And it was seemingly simple to, uh, put up cool visualizations that are open um, and, and allow others to edit. Uh, it, that, I guess, part hasn't really materialized yet, but um, it, it allowed a lot of flexibility um, in, in how data was presented. Um, and again, most of this was originated in um, trying to get some benchmarks and stuff for um, cloud costs, but then this kind of got a life of its own just uh, and so all the queries and, and what are in this um, repo usage metering, um, which basically uh, this is what it does to begin with. So it just takes out about half a, half a dozen columns from the job table and the uh, numeric tables. Um, so it minimizes the amount of data that we have to work with uh, locally. So we don't have to 
sift through all the job parameters and things that are massive and not really considered in this case. Um, and then we created this dozen or so uh, queries that focus on massaging the uh, CPU and memory usage data and some of the uh, the user counts. Um, and, uh, and that produces these files that are then uh, used on, on observable. And so if files are edited, uh, same to your point, if files are edited, they observable automatically reflects those changes. Um, but the files need to be run manually as it stands right now. Um, I think this would be great additions to GX admin, which has this part of it is already. So, I mean, once that's in GX admin, you could directly stream that out of uh, Grafana, right? Okay. Um, okay. Um, yeah, no, I mean, that, that's, uh, that's cool. That, that sounds good. So, I mean, I guess that gets me to where we are uh, and, and ideas or discussion for what can be done with it. Um, so the dashboard is sort of being actively developed, uh, answering questions that, that are pertinent. So Michelle, even this morning, made some changes on, um, on it to allow this uh, filtering of the bottom of the less popular tools. Um, where a lot of time and efforts being put in is complementing this usage data with the targeting benchmarking. Again, we use this as a way to identify what are the popular tools. So namely, which ones are sort of resource uh, consuming a lot of resources and, and used by a lot of users. Um, and then Keith's been working on his uh, ABM library and uh, using it to benchmark uh, a broader range of uh, job configurations. So on usegalaxy.org, and this is what Kaivan um, learned is that our scope of variability is fairly small, meaning that all the jobs run pretty much with, you know, for a given tool with you know, four or 12 CPUs or something. And so the machine learning can't predict what's a good number of CPUs because all it has is four every time. Um, and so Keith is working on expanding that and sort of looking at the boundaries that then led to uh, Agon's models will hopefully uh, yield a, a more representative picture. And then, you know, Marius, to your point, right, it's, uh, you know, and Sam saying this doesn't update automatically, you know, it'd be cool to see this live, right? Uh, it's, we had data from 21, I think, uh, then we kind of updated it by six month uh, margin. And it'd be nice to you know, be able to look at every month um, or every, at the end of every month for this to run automatically every day, whatever. So I, I hadn't thought about it as part of the um, GX admin and feeding it into Grafana, but that sounds cool, so. And that's it. I got a, a summary of any of this. If um, you missed the slides or links along the way, um, and are interested in again, a reminder that if anybody is in the next meetings on uh, a week from today. I'll just add one thing. Uh, besides uh, the work that uh, Keith is doing to uh, diversify the number of CPUs used for tools, we also plan to get the data from uh, EU and Australia because they seem to be having uh, using different number of CPUs. So that's going to make the data more uh, uh, varied. Yeah. And Simon was waiting uh, for some of this to become a little less uh, custom, I guess, uh, and wanted to run these queries on newsgalaxy.org. And I understand he got um, GRT running at AU. Um, so I don't know where I guess that's going to leave that. This is awesome work, Ennis and everybody. Um, I guess there's a couple, there's a couple of things going on. Mind. So I, I mean, I think, I mean, as we've been talking about for years now, there's an awesome paper to be written around this. Um, in the in the meantime, it, is this is there a link to the observable dashboard on the hub? No, not that I know of. Well, I forget. I'm trying to remember the context, but um, 
not long, maybe it was in the context of writing up the Anvil Renewal Grant. Um, I was looking for an update, up-to-date version of this. And I think I found an old version and conflicting version. So it'd be nice to, you know, kind of um, consolidate on like a single version that is like um, the official version that is somewhat updated. Yeah, that was uh, about October, I think. Uh, Observable introduced the notion of teams, uh, free teams. Ah. But they didn't allow you to go, because I think the, the original tag was at Anvil Project or something like that, but it yeah. wouldn't allow I couldn't figure it out, I don't know, like to make that become like a team uh, thing. So we had to use a new handle. Um, and that's how we ended up with this. Because now, because it used to be, you had to go through basically a forking and a PR process, which was cumbersome. It's not as straightforward. People aren't familiar with it as they are on GitHub. And so each individual had to have their own fork and it was just complicated to work on. But this new model, it's, you know, everybody's collaboratively working on the same notebook at once. But it required this change of. I see. But, but moving forward, I guess this that problem will go away now that there's a team and everyone can kind of edit the same document and just move forward with that. Okay. I'm very um, comfortable with that. Um, and then I, I, you may have said this, but I, but I may have missed it. Um, uh, is there effort to expand the set of tools that are considered, or is it is that list more or less fixed at this point? For for the benchmarking part, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is uh, it's on the to do list. So um, I mean the again feedback and input from somebody that's in the know with the, the domain would be great. Um, the current list or the thinking was uh, we got a few of those. Uh, 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 mapping tools. The next set was RNA um, kind of focused tools, and then an RNA seq workflow that would combine the two. Uh, and th those would be sort of the three prongs for the paper um, that would um, be a, a unit for the time being. But then I, I hear a lot of people are diving into single cell stuff. So it'd be cool to benchmark those, but it's uh, feedback input would be super valuable. Yeah, I mean, we're we're never going to be able to do a comprehensive analysis of everything, but if there's a few major topics where we want to go deep, I think that would um, be compelling. Um, well, tell you what, I, I have the next call on my calendar, so I'll be sure to join. Um, I just had my 27th class yesterday, my last class, so I'm, I'm my life is free again, so I'll be able to join uh, starting next week. Okay, but awesome, awesome work, all all of you. Yeah, thank you so much, Ennis, uh, and the team. Um, one question in the chat, uh, is it okay to broadly share the observable and tweet it out? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, Super. If anybody wants to work on the observable stuff, um, Michelle would be thrilled, I'm sure, to have some help. Awesome. Any other questions for Ennis or the group? If not, um, thanks again uh, for joining. Um, again, this is our last community call of the year, so we'll see you all in 2023. Um, I'm going to be starting putting together the lineup. So if you're interested in presenting, um, please let me know uh, and we'll get you scheduled. Uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, see you at the hackathon. Uh, if not, then see you in 2023. Bye, all.